Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for coming back for another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do an all over t-shirt sublimation. Hope you guys enjoy it. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you guys are new. So I always use PixArt. I'm not sponsored by PixArt or anything like that, but I do like to use PixArt because I do use it for my YouTube thumbnails and pretty much everything that I edit. So that is why I do suggest it a lot. I do pay $15 a month for extra stickers and just extra editing tools. You can use PixArt for free, but I do pay the extra just for the extra tools. All right, and so I'm in PixArt. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll to the very bottom. On the bottom, you see colored backgrounds and I am going to pick white for now. And since I'm designing my own front and back on this, um, I'm gonna show you guys how I'm doing it. So on the very bottom, you see all of the tools. I'm going to be picking just a background color. So I am gonna go into add photo, three images. And we're gonna go ahead and enter the color that we want. And I was thinking about doing tie-dye and that's what I've searched before. So um, we could do tie-dye, but I kind of want to do something different, maybe some clouds. So let's go ahead and type in clouds. Clouds background. So I'm gonna select that. Anything that has the crown in the corner is with the premium account. So like up in the left-hand corner, the brains and the lightning, I guess that is a premium one. Let's look up smoke background. Let's try this one. Add. And basically I'm just going to fill this whole square. You see on the bottom it says opacity. You can actually use that slider to make it lighter or darker. And I'm kind of wanting it to be a little bit dark. I'll try that for now apply i'm gonna go into stickers push discover in the corner and search butterflies or whatever you're trying to look for i'm just going to click recent because i have searched the butterflies before and then you see vogue and that's one that i've used before so i'm just going to click vogue i am going to go ahead and go back to stickers on the very bottom and I can type in t-shirt, which you can do in the search bar of stickers, or I can just click my recent. So I've used this before and I'm going to just use this as a stencil. I will be removing it when I'm done. So we're just going to put it right here just to get an idea of what it's going to look like. And I feel like that could be a little bit smaller. Let's bring that sticker back. And obviously the neckline isn't gonna come down that big. I'm just using this as a stencil. And I feel like that's gonna be okay. I have to raise the Vogue a little bit more just because this sticker has a really low neck. Okay, and that looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and apply. Next, save. And now I'm doing the back of the shirt. We're gonna go ahead and click the white square again. I'm going to try to make the back the same as the front. I think I'm going to try something. I'm going to stick with that, I think, and that is for the back. Apply. And now I'm going to take you guys over to the computer and show you how I split both of these images into six tiles. And here are both of my images that I sent over to my computer. And I wanted to show you guys that this is not in any software. I literally just opened up the photo in my computer. No software at all. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut each of these into six tiles so that it makes a bigger image and covers the whole shirt. And here is my image. I just have it selected regular. So what I'm gonna do is select the image and then over here in this corner, if you guys can see my mouse, I'm on the show markup toolbar right here. It's next to the search button on the actual image. So I'm on the image. I click show markup toolbar. All right, over to the left, you have all these tools. This is where you can see the sizes of your image. And that was just under adjust size. 
you can go up to tools, scroll all the way down and you see this right here, the command K. You would select the space and then press command K. So what we're gonna do first is we are going to split this in half. Over the G, there is a blue dot and that is the center of the image. So I know that over the G is going to be the center and that is where I'm gonna do my first crop. So here is half right here. And I try to get as close as I can to the half right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and click Command K now that that's selected. And that gave us half of the image. And we're gonna go ahead and name this as the first half so we don't lose it. So we're gonna say first half. And guys, be sure to go up to File and duplicate this three times because you are going to need this three times to do each piece on that half. So duplicate before. And now what I'm gonna do is cut this into thirds as close as I can. Let's try it like this. The square, I'm gonna take this square or this rectangle. You guys saw I went into shapes over here. I clicked shapes and I clicked this square and it brought this dark square up or this rectangle. And so now you can actually go and select that square Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna go over here and grab another square. And then we'll grab one more. And that is how I divided it into three on this half and then the three on the other half. And once again, I did use the shapes over here and I clicked this square right here to make my three rectangles. And that is just to use as a stencil so that whenever I go and cut, it looks right. Okay, so right underneath the Vogue, that is where I'm gonna be cutting. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that area. But first I am going to remove this rectangle. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and trash that. I'm going to go ahead and select the space with my arrow. And I'm going to kind of go down into the second rectangle. And then you guys see this button up here, crop. If you guys don't want to use the command K, you can just click this button, crop. And there's our first piece. And I did get a little bit of black in that one. So I am going to go ahead and try to crop that off like that, crop. I'm going to change this to Vogue left top one. Okay. So I'm going to save it like that so that I can find it later. Since last time I messed up um, and didn't save three of these pieces because we're going to have one, two, three. So I should have actually duplicated this twice to make three pieces or three halves because we're taking a section out of each one. So first half. And then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. File, duplicate. So we're gonna go ahead and just move this over here and we're gonna bring this one here. And now we are going to do the same thing that we did last time and we are going to grab shapes. And I'm going to quickly go through this part so you guys don't have to listen. Right there. And then you can click crop right up on top. And that's your middle piece. So Vogue, left, middle save. Right, and here's our next piece. If you guys saw that in the other videos, but you're using the rectangular selection tool to crop. And there's my bottom piece. I'm going to go ahead and rename to Vogue left bottom. All right, guys, and we're on the next side. 
go ahead and grab it, crop it in half again. Make sure to go all the way to the bottom, all the way to the edges, because it will matter when you go to print. And then we're going to move this line halfway. Grab a shape so we can grab this rectangle and go all the way to the corner. We're do it the same way that we did on the other half. So you can actually use this rectangle as your marker. And so your half of your G is about the center. I match this dot a little over the other dot, the center dot, just so that I can get that dotted line on the inside of this line to go exactly in half right here. Bring that dotted line, our line to crop. So we're gonna bring it in inside of the line. Make sure you can see that dotted line moving inside of that black line. And it's good on the bottom, good up here, dotted line in the inside. And there's our second half. Vogue, top left. And we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this so we have it for the middle and for the end. Always duplicate twice before you start cropping. So always duplicate before you start cropping so that you have this half already ready for the middle and for the end. So we're gonna go ahead and go back up to file like we did last time. Duplicate, file, duplicate again. And I'm gonna duplicate again just in case I mess up. All right guys, and there's our top half. And we're gonna go ahead and click crop. And then I am going to go up here and save. Crop. And I'm saving this as Vogue right middle. Okay, and crop. Vogue bottom right. We use a sub paper, sublimation paper, 125G, 13 by 19. And I will be leaving the link down in the description if you guys want to shop for this brand of paper and we've been getting it on Amazon. So I'll be leaving that link for you guys and we do make a little small commission off of it if you guys do shop from that link. And we're gonna go ahead and start with the left hand top, our first image or our first one of six. And we're just gonna click Finder over here in the left hand corner. If you guys use Mac, you guys know what I'm talking about. And you just click your Finder. We're gonna see all of our images that we just recently cropped right here. It is a very good idea to make sure that you are saving them to a new name or renaming each one. I clicked Recents. And then I just click the image. Okay, and there it is right there. No fancy program, no software, no profiles. And we're going to go ahead and click file, print Epson 15,000 series three. And there are three of them. There's 15,000, 15,000, 15,000 series three. One of these is for the front tray or for the cassette tray. And one is for the rear tray. So if you do not click one or the other, the selection um, Super BA3 13 by 19 is only available under one of these. So be sure to select the right one. I'm doing the 15,000 series three because I did update. And then photo on matte paper, US letter size. I'm going to be doing super BA3. Um, the orientation is regular or um, vertical. And since I'm doing vertical on this one, I'm gonna keep doing it for the rest of them so that they all come out the right size. Preview, media and quality, photo matte paper, best quality, layout, everything we're keeping kind of the same that it already has. We only have to make sure that we click flip horizontally. If you do not click flip horizontally, it will come out backward. So be sure to click flip horizontally. Okay, and then we're gonna go to paper handling and we're gonna say scale to fit, scale to fit super BA3 suggested and then we're going to click preview 
And you do want to make sure that you click auto rotate on because it will fill your whole page up perfectly. And if you don't, it's going to come out like that. So scale to fit, print entire image. And let's try it out. Click print. And I didn't do any settings on the printer. I left that alone. As soon as I loaded my Super BA3, because I had my settings right on the computer, it automatically printed out the back. So the first one came out pretty nice. And that little spot was actually on the image right here. And I didn't even notice it, but it's okay. Let me go ahead and get the others printed out and I'll show you guys what they come out like. All right guys, and I got all the pieces printed out. This is a six foot table. So you can really see how big these papers are or these prints are. This piece over here is actually for down here on the blue side. And this one over here goes on the bottom of this pink half. And guys, I think this video is almost 30 minutes long, maybe 15 by the time I edit. Be sure to come back for part two. We'll be printing these on the shirt. Hope to see you guys in part two. Bye.